Don the Con gets voted off, kicked out of Otter Creek Town Council, and he stays for the entire meeting. When he is on the town council, he stomps off like a child. And during the meeting, he's begging the lawyer to side with him. Even though last meeting, he told the lawyer she was doing illegal things. Don the Con claims he was still part of the town council, which means he illegally removed actual information owned by the town recorded on his cell phone. Because if he wasn't part of the town council, then it wouldn't have been illegal if he was just an ordinary participant and member and resident of the community. Like me! Rollin Half wants to know, how could Russ get back into the actual town council if his term is up? Well, that has everything to do with this federal judge blocking putting a temporary injunction on Form 6. Russ the Sus did not fill out Form 6. Don the Con did. Laura Mott did. I think Zim did. Joe did. They would have had to, or they wouldn't have even... Um, they, they wouldn't have been able to be seated on the board. Now, whether it's actually uploaded to the federal website yet or not, I haven't checked lately. But with that temporary block, all the requirements of Form 6 now don't exist. And so Russ the Sus could now throw his name back in the hat of Otter Creek as a person of interest to take that seat that Don the Con stomped out saying he would not serve on the town council in the last month's meeting. So open seat, which means Don the Con could put in a letter of interest, Russ the Sus could put in a letter of interest, Jeremy Hales could put in a letter of interest. And I've heard it enough. Jeremy, now's your time. No Form 6. And I've heard everything from, oh, Madam Mayor could come back. First of all, Madam Mayor is not coming back. She's retired and living her best life on the road. That's not going to happen. Now, Form 6 helped push, get, push her and her husband to get to that point. I still have no interest in local politics. Regardless of Form 6 or no Form 6, I want nothing to do with the local politics. I don't even want to have to film these types of things. I only do it out of the aspect of accountability and keeping a record of what has happened there as everything is under investigation and I pursue things the legal way, the right way. So... The aspect of me running, never going to happen. The aspect of Madam Mayor coming back, never going to happen. Russ the Sus trying to weasel his way back in, I could definitely, absolutely see him trying to do that and then trying to network or trying to collude with Laura Mott. Mary Henderson says, Laura Mott, uh, she's either really shy at being filmed or she's got mug shots out there somewhere, maybe an active warrant. Other people have said, who's that? Is that Cousin It? Well, it's not Cousin It. It's Cousin Mott. It's Laura Mott, okay? So understand that Laura Mott has been very vocal in the past that I have no legal authority to actually film her, which then I told her I don't need your permission, and I have every legal authority to film her. Now all kinds of cameras are on her. So is she wearing her hair to cover her face on purpose? Well, I would assume all females wear their hair on purpose the way they put it. So the question really is, is she doing it to hide her face or is she doing it for another reason? Does she think she looks the best that way instead of it up? She likes it down. Does she think it's best in the light? I don't know. I don't know. Now, I know what it looks like. I know it looks like she's hiding from all the cameras. And there are plenty there filming her. And if it's, it's, honestly, that's my best guess as well. That's your guess, that's my guess. Laura Mott is trying to hide from the cameras. Well, why would, why would she even go for this position? Well, I would say, first of all, I don't have any proof of this. This is just my opinion. So Russ the Sus tried to talk her into it and Don the Con to stay on and get Stuart Stewart back in, then making it a four against one. 
Vice Mayor Zim. So the whole goal was Russ the Sus to get his cronies in there with him so he could manipulate the people and the residents of Otter Creek, Laura Mott being one of those used by him in the past and would be used by him again. Now what's happened, because Russ the Sus was outplayed, outmaneuvered. I mean, it's a chess game, a legal one. And and uh, it was well played. And he lost big time. Except Laura Mott thought she had Don the Con there, right? But then Don the Con stomps out. And then they take a vote. What's going to happen with Don the Con's resignation from the last month's meeting? When Don the Con comes in, starts grabbing chairs and says, Hey, I'm still in. This is like Lynette. My mom died. My mom didn't die. Don DeCon, I'm out. I'm still in. Luann Stoll wants to know, Jeremy, if there are two people who apply for this open seat, will there be another election? The answer is simply yes, but it's not going to be a town election. What happens when there's an open seat after the election? Remember, there's one election a year, but there was not an election this year because there was no opposing candidates. There would have been an election between Don, Laura, and Stuart Stewart, but Stuart Stewart pulled out. And then in a very, very poorly chess move, uh, coordinated, orchestrated by Russ the Sus, the loser, the failing loser, Stuart Stewart then said, I want to put my name in for the one-year seat. In other words, saying, I want to go and oppose against Carl and Joseph. Well, you can't. He already put his name in for the two-year seat and then withdrew his name. Then there was no opposition. So what happens after an election, even though there was no election this year, is every individual who lives, you must be a resident of Otter Creek. No outside person. And people keep saying, well, what about this person? What about this person? What about this? And I keep saying... It doesn't work that way. Only a resident of Otter Creek may serve on that town council. And so, two people. If one person, even if it's just one person, right? If it's one person, what happened is those four council members, Mayor Zim, you've got Vice Mayor Carl, you got Joseph and Laura Mott. They now vote on whether they want to place that position, that person in that position, that open seat. Now, they don't have to place that person in that seat. So let's say it's Russ the Sus. Russ the Sus puts in his letter, and he wants to be back on the town council. But, huh, the council actually has to approve that. And Laura Mott goes, yep, I want him in. But, mm, Mayor Zim, Vice Mayor Carl, Joe, they all say, nay, we don't want him on this council. He's done enough damage. He does not get seated. So it's the council that will actually make a vote on who applies or puts in a letter of interest. Now, Lynette has done this in the past. I have a copy of it. It is hilarious. And others have done this in the past. The question is, who's going to do it in the future? Now, it would be great to see like-minded individuals that want positive growth and a healthy environment for the residents of Otter Creek. Maybe the new owners of the campground. Maybe Deanna. Maybe the Hudson sisters. Maybe, 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 baby. Maybe, baby. Oh, wait, wait. wait. I'm not sure we're allowed to say baby. Ah, oh, but we'll say it anyway. Maybe, baby. Maybe I will. Now, you already know I won't. So, I don't know who it's going to be. I do anticipate Russ the Sus putting his name in. And I do anticipate Don the Con making further complications. But... Does he have any legal standing? Roland Evan Longaberger wants to know, is there going to be any legal issues for Mayor Zim for not heeding the lawyer's advice? Now, you have to keep the focus on the key word, advice. And I'm going to su supplement that word. We're going to take advice, set it aside, and we're going to say opinion. Now, you know what I didn't say? I did not say law. I did not say illegal. I did not say, well, you know what? More importantly, the lawyer did not say those words. She didn't say it's illegal. She didn't say it's the law. She didn't say it has to be done this way. She gave her opinion. Now, Laura Mott gave an opinion when she said, yeah, let's, let's vote Don the Con back in. But who else gave opinions? Well, 
Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Council Member Joe all gave opinions and said, we are not accepting Don the Con on this town council because he officially told us he was done, he resigned. So an opinion is not law. I, I hope you all understand that. Just because the hired lawyer, which she's incredible, uh, her name is Megan. Some have asked, who is the lawyer? And that is Megan. She actually represented the town of Otter Creek in the lawsuit that I had against them for not giving public records. That was against Mary Mary and Russ the Sus. Had nothing to do with Madam Mayor Therese. Had nothing to do with Clerk Belinda. Had nothing to do with this current council. Although you may say Don the Con had something to do with it and so did Laura Mott. But... I'll digress from that. It's just an opinion. She is stating the opinion to cover herself, uh, but she works for the town of Otter Creek, and she's stating an opinion for the town of Otter Creek, but there was nothing illegal about what Mayor Zim did. As a matter of fact, what he did was set a precedent. Okay. Now, I hope you understand what that means. What it means is, hey, this isn't something that's commonly done. There's no laws against it. There's no laws for it. There's nothing. So at some point, it starts somewhere. Well, Mayor Zim set the president that we're not going to live in a garbage dump with these garbage pail kids in Otter Creek on the council, that we are not going to tolerate this childish behavior. We're not going to tolerate these outbursts. We're not going to tolerate the sabotaging of meetings. We're not going to tolerate somebody saying, I'm all for the town and then stomping out. We're not going to tolerate, I'm in, I'm out, I'm in, I'm out. He set a precedent. And therefore, if Don the Con wants to challenge it, you have to understand the law works this way. If Don the Con wants to challenge it, number one, he's got to have enough money for a lawyer, right? We already see some of those issues with other individuals in Otter Creek. You've got to have enough money for a lawyer. Now, most lawyers, if you don't have a case, are just going to tell you, you don't have a case, save your money. I would never, ever, most lawyers have a reputation, right? They work in that field. And if they come with a frivolous lawsuit into a courtroom, that judge is never going to take them seriously again. A lawyer isn't typically there for your best interest. A lawyer is usually covering their best interest. Now, I'm not saying most, I'm not saying there aren't lawyers that are there for your best interest, okay? But first and foremost, a lawyer is going to cover themselves in their sphere of industry and influence. And so, no lawyer is going to look at Don the Con and go, oh yeah, you got a great thing going here. Pay up. Pony up the money. What's Don the Con going to do? We've already seen Form 6. Oh, wait. Wait, wait. That's right. Maybe Patty will send him some money. Maybe Paul. <laughs> Maybe baby, right? Maybe baby. So the issue is, will a lawyer even take it if he has money? And then will a judge recognize it as an actual suit? So much of this stuff gets thrown out because it's garbage. Lawyer won't take it. Judge won't even hear it. And so, no, Mayor Zim did not place himself in any legal liability going against an opinion that was stated by Megan or the opinion that was stated by Laura Mott. It was two opinions against three opinions. And guess which opinion won? Don the Con's out, baby. Chook75 wants to know, who's the masked man that walked in? There was a masked man, and he was there last month as well. Now, I wasn't there because I have so many intense meetings right now. And frankly, Christian and I are in very, very intense um, training and licensing programs right now to take the business of what the hails to the next level even higher. And so uh, things are very tight this week and next week with scheduling. But even though I wasn't there, he was there. And that should share enough information with you right there in regards to who that is. Now, there are those out there with theories that that was Russ the Sus. No, that is not Russ the Sus. There are theories out there that that's Lynette. No, that is not Lynette or John Crook. Come on. There are those who know who it is. And that is few and far between. And there are those that don't. And they're going to keep asking, who's the masked man? Who is the masked man coming to the meetings? 
All I can tell you is the umbrella guy said, that man is gorgeous. T.G. Sharp says, so according to Don the Khan, his gospel is, when you're not doing it my way, oh, I'm going to stomp out of here. I'm leaving and I'm taking my phone with me with that secret recording. But then to show up the next week and go, hi, guys, I'm still here and I want to be on the council now. Correct. Okay. So what's going on with that recording? Well, I can share with you because I have actually had quite a few conversations one-on-one with the ethics committee in Tallahassee about this because Russ the Sus is under full investigation right now. Okay. This is a full-blown, full investigation. They are meeting with me soon here in Florida. They've already had multiple meetings with me over the phone. They're already having multiple meetings with other individuals over the phone because they asked me for all that contact information, which I gave to them. So, um, You have this whole aspect of these recordings, and they were taken out. Now, Russ has done it, and Don has done it. And they've both done it to give it to Shart, who is a nobody in the sphere of this story. Literally, an absolutely nobody. Uh, Lower than the the poop on the bottom of your shoe. Okay, it's a Shart. I mean, that's not good. So... Uh, they're doing this illegally. They are breaking sunshine law. Now, Tallahassee, the ethics committee, has asked me for a longer list of of issues against these individuals. And one of the things I did talk to them about, I mean, they have so many things that they're already digging into, and they're taking this extremely seriously. And um, one of the things that they wanted, they wanted even more and and I one of the things I brought up was, well, they continue to take recordings and remove them from the actual town hall. And they said, yeah, that's absolutely illegal, but we don't cover sunshine law. So sunshine law states that those individuals, Russ the Sus, Don the Khan, as members of the council cannot remove a recording from the building. OK, and so that's a sunshine law issue. It's illegal, 100% illegal. They completely and totally agree with me, but they can't dig into that investigation portion. So that's another portion of Florida that they're passing that off to. (laughs) Funny how these individuals think they're so important. The, uh, you know, on YouTube or Facebook or other individuals, you know, other venues, and and all they continue to do is further incriminate people. And this is the funny thing, and I think with social media, you know, it doesn't matter who you are. You've got these people going, "Oh man, I hate, I hate Jeremy, I hate George, I hate, I hate, I hate." Go get them, go do it, get them, get them, get them, get them. And the funny part is. None of these individuals encouraging these fools to continue to incriminate themselves are going to pay any of the legal bills. They can, they can tell them, go get them all they want. They say all these things without any consequences, except the individuals, Don the Con, Russ the Sus, Lynette, Crook, the list could continue to go on, right? Yeah, baby, you know it could. These are the individuals that will have the consequences financially and other consequences, potentially jail, potentially Don the Con, Russ the Sus, will never, ever be able to be represented on the board again. So that whole issue with the recordings, it has to go through another legal avenue, even though the ethics committee is very much in touch and in tune with it going on. Crazy Gamer Horse says, hey. This is the first meeting Don the Con has actually stayed throughout the entirety in a long time. You got to give him some props for that. Isn't that interesting? Don the Con is removed from town council and all of the sudden now he can stay throughout an entire meeting as a pure resident. Now he wants to stay like I'm confused. You would think somebody who says he wants the betterment for the residents, uh, the residents that voted him, right? Uh, I wonder if those same residents would ever vote him again after all these childish antics. I'm going to guess no, but I mean, I can't say for sure, right? But here's the reality. He might be a better resident for Otter Creek than a town council member. I mean, that just might be the reality of all of it and all reality. You can put that one on a t-shirt as well. I don't know why he's playing the games he's playing. I don't know if it's medical. Uh, I don't know if it's self-induced by pharmaceutical fun things. 
I, I, I just don't know. I, I, I don't. I mean, I have my theories. You know, I have my theories. Like, I have a theory that Mama Peahen right there is going to hatch over 20 eggs here next week. But we'll have to see what truly happens with Don the Con in Otter Creek. Renee Villan Villan7676 says, Hey, now that Form 6 is out of the way, maybe Council Member Gale will come back. Now, I know there are some of you who have hesitations. You've been very verbal about it. Number one, Gail, piece of paper, hide in her face. We've tried to talk about that before. She could have been very uncomfortable with some other things, and there are some reasons. It could have been just Russ the Sus has horrible breath. <sighs> it very well could be that, okay? Maybe he has B.O. I mean, he is Russ the Sus. He's a real-life Garbage pail kid, guys. Come on, just like Don the Con. But some of you concerned because Russ the Sus had an illegal meeting outside of Town Hall, which she's being investigated for, and she was out there cheering and clapping. Okay, I get that. And I saw that. And you saw that. We don't always have our best days. I've had bad days. You've had bad days. Unfortunately, or fortunately, films forever, right? So if Gail does come back to the board now that Form 6 is done, uh, we need complete and total commitment. I think that's one of the biggest things. Like the stability has to be there for the betterment of the town and for the people. And I believe Gail can provide that. Gail is homegrown. She's one of the insiders, you know, not like me. I'm an outsider. Wherever I go, apparently, I'm an outsider. Oh, but I kind of like being on the outside. You know, it's cutting edge. It, it's, it's literally the entrepreneurs that blast the new trails. Like the one that's going to go here, a huge zip line right across this 100-foot ravine all the way over there to that mountainside. You know what? It takes somebody who's not cut of the same cloth. It takes somebody who thinks outside of the box to truly make good things happen at times. And I think Gail can be that person if she wants to be that person. I don't know if she's ready. I haven't talked to her. I haven't communicated with her about any of this. I do know that she was vocal that when Russ the Sus was gone, she would come back to town hall meetings, which I believe she was there, even though I could not physically be there. And here within lies my biggest pet peeve with social media. If another content creator says something, then everybody who views it takes it as gospel truth. Okay, so first of all, we live in a culture that says you tell your truth. Okay, that's called relative truth. In other words, whatever is true to me will only be true to me, and you go seek out your own truth. Okay, so let's say to me, the way to spell the word yes is Y E S. That's my relative truth. But you go, uh-uh, uh-uh, my truth is the way to spell yes is N-O. And our culture would go, oh, well, that's great. You go do you, boo, boo, because that's your truth for you. No, that's not truth. There's absolute truth. So absolute truth versus relative truth, where everybody goes, well, my truth, this is my truth. Who cares about your truth? We want absolute truth. That's what's held up in the court of law. So this is the issue. Somebody says something, it gets ridiculously out of hand, and everybody then actually believes it. Now, if they're lying, what's that say about that individual? And if they're lying, what does it say about everybody who just listened and rallied around those cries? Oh, yes. Oh, oh, thank you for telling me your truth. Thank you for speaking the truth. Oh, I always knew it. And then when somebody comes out and defends themselves and actually shares truth that can be debunked, huh, what's true then? I mean, here, here's another thing. Oh, you've got two conflicting parties and going, well, God's on my side. And this one goes, God's on my side. Listen, God's not on both sides. Which one is it? God's on the side of absolute truth, treating people 
with dignity, which also comes with consequences. You don't think so? Read the entire book of Judges. God wiped out full nations for their sin. Full nations. You might want to read Genesis chapter 6 as well. There was that thing called the flood, and he only spared one family because of their sin. And here's, I think, the biggest sin on social media. If somebody says something, everybody that heard it runs with it and goes, Oh, this is what's true now. Just because somebody said something doesn't make it true, first of all. And nor can you define a person based on one thing. It is a pattern that defines a person. If somebody comes to work every single day on time, and then one time they're late by five minutes, am I going to go around saying, Oh, well, this employee, he's late or she's late all the time. No, their pattern is being on time. They were not on time one time. That one time doesn't define them. Pattern in people's lives, like lying. Patterns in people's life, like manipulating. Patterns in people's life, like cheating. Patterns in people's life, like stealing. Patterns in people's lives, like rug dealing, rug using. Patterns in people's life. So here's the pattern for Gail that I've seen. She loves the people and the residents of Otter Creek. She wants what's best for them. And so her being at that town hall meeting illegally held by Russ the Sus and Don the Khan outside of the building and her clapping isn't the pattern of her life. What I have seen is she cares and wants the betterment for the people. That's the pattern. Patty Wagner wants to know if Russ the Sus is currently under investigation, wouldn't it be illegal for him to be on the town council seat? No, not necessarily. It's an investigation. So not until the consequences come down could it be illegal for him to hold a seat. So one of the consequences can be and probably will be, let's be really honest here, that he will never ever be allowed to run for a position in a municipality or a town council, again, in any way, shape, or form. He has abused all power. He has literally enticed residents to hit him. He has done some of the most grotesque things that you can think in a tiny town. They most likely are going to ban him forever from ever holding a position. Now, he should have stepped down when he had an opportunity, when he knew all this um, was was hitting the fan. But he didn't. He actually increased. I mean, we've seen the same pattern in Lynette and Crook, right? We've seen the same pattern in other fools that literally think that uh, when they're told to stop, that they should keep going and going. And somehow that's going to help them. That's going to, we all know it's going to hurt them. And he pushed and he pushed and he pushed. I'm sure like all the others, he'll cry victim once he gets shoved back by the ethics committee. But that's on him. That's what he did to himself. He made those decisions. He gets the consequences for them. Chamney1957 wants to know, with Form 6 out of the way now, what's that mean for Madam Mayor Therese? What's that mean for the 100 other public officials that have stepped down? Well, I can tell you what it means for Madam Mayor Therese. Nothing. She's living her best life, as I shared earlier. Now, for all of these other public officials who have stepped down, that gives them more incentive to step back up. Now, keep in mind, when Form 6 was passed, it was actually passed with the intention to weed out corruption. And in my opinion, what it became was a list of saying, hey, here's everything I own, come rob me. Like an invitation, especially when people don't know that I'm home. Not that I don't have security cameras everywhere. And so, in my opinion, it actually increases corruption. Because at that point, who's going to want those seats? The most corrupt individuals. And so the good people got weeded out. The bad people got in. What does that mean for those who said, hey, this is way too intrusive. This is a, a violation of my privacy. 
Well, then now they can come back. So it all depends on their charter. If their charter, first and foremost, is legal, there are so many things in the Otter Creek Charter that are currently illegal. That charter cannot go against state law. That charter can't go against federal law, but it does. And Megan, the lawyer, told Don already, the thing needs to be rewritten. You have so much legal liability as a town because it's so out of date. It's so illegal. So we'll have to see what happens in the long run with all of this. But I think what you'll see is good people coming back to serve because they care about and they love the people that they live with. Raging Nana Kindred Spirit says, correct me if I'm wrong, but is Laura Mott an attorney? No, Megan is the attorney on the other side of the room on the tables. Laura Mott, to my knowledge, last I knew she was working in a tractor store. And that wasn't all that long ago. Now, I don't know what she does. I have no clue. All I know is she was spotted in the tractor store as an employee. I think anybody who's gamefully employed and is contributing towards society that way, and that's, that's a positive thing. But no, I don't think she's a lawyer. If she was a lawyer, she wouldn't have signed her name off on a resolution that illegally targeted me against every other person in Otter Creek, incriminating herself and the town. Now, I know what you're thinking. Okay, she incriminated herself. What are you doing about that? We'll talk about that if we need to in the future. But the other thing that this individual wants to know is, does she realize she's being used as a pawn? There's no doubt in my mind, Laura's been used by a pawn in the past. Don the Khan has even been used as a pawn. Here's the funniest thing. If you look at the original videos of town hall meetings that I began to upload for accountability purposes, and that's it. And keep in mind, I wasn't the first one actually recording these and disseminating them. It was John Crook and Lynette. And even before that, 10 years before, it was Russ the Suss's own daughter, Charlene. So she's been used by a pawn in the past. No doubt. Don the Khan has been used as a pawn. You look at those original videos, it was Russ the Sus against Don the Khan. I have the 6,000 emails. It was Russ the Sus and Mary Mary, Don is scary, locking him out of secret meetings, which is illegal. And then you get this whole philosophy, the enemy of my enemy is my friend, which by the way, how are you going to trust your enemy I don't get that one at all. I mean, they're just going to turn on you. That's why it's so important to keep your circle so small because people are so selfish in this world today. If they can't get something from you, it just gets ugly real fast. As you can see in Otter Creek with Lynette and Crook, they couldn't get what they wanted from me. And now they're getting all the exposure in the world. So Don's been used as a pawn. Laura's been used as a pawn. And hopefully, hopefully, Laura turns around and understands what is best for the people and the residents. She ain't there yet. My prayer is she will be. Carmen Susie wants to know, how in the world are you going to have a festival in Otter Creek with nasty water? Are the food trucks going to bring their own water to cook with, to clean with? That's a major concern. That's not healthy water in Otter Creek. And that's not something that's been addressed yet in the town hall meeting. How are they going to get clean water? If you're going to bring in food trucks, I'm going to assume they will have some potable or portable water for themselves. But they're still going to need a hookup. So where are these food trucks going to be to actually hook up? Normally, you want power. Normally, you want water. You want full utilities. Now, I'm sure plenty of them run on generators. I'm just not sure they're going to have enough potable or portable water with them as well. So this is a huge question that I think is going to need to be addressed by the Council of Otter Creek. And I didn't think of it. You guys did. And so will the water be clean by then? No significant 
upgrades or changes have happened yet in the water. The Wakasasa meetings are still happening to get that freshwater pipeline through Otter Creek all the way to Cedar Key. So that's a positive. But we know that's not going to be in yet. We also know the community center isn't going to be in yet. So sources of water and electricity. I think what they're probably going to have to do is limit the actual food trucks and vendors that can be there that don't need power and don't need water. Douglas DeForest has a pretty good idea. He says, wouldn't it be a good idea at this festival to put Deanna in a booth and have people guess her phone number or possibly even pay for the digits? Yeah, that's probably a pretty good way to make income. But I don't think this festival is going to be about Deanna. They talked about trains, and frankly, I'm not too thrilled about that either. They have nothing to draw on with trains. Now, if they're Otter Creek, maybe it could be the Otter Fest, like Oktoberfest. Maybe it could be Otter Freaks. Maybe it could... The, the terms are limitless. I don't like the train idea because I think it limits what they can actually do and what vendors think they're going to get into. There are no trains. The tracks aren't there. Nothing is there anymore. Okay, the old train station is there, but it's completely overgrown and nobody can go into it. It would be trespassing. And if you've seen any videos with an individual who doesn't live in Otter Creek going in it, he trespassed. How stupid do you have to be to actually film your illegal activity? Oh, wait. There's other YouTubers that do that all the time. It's called defamation. If you speak truth, it's protected speech. If you're telling a lie about somebody, that's slander defamation. That's illegal. So, you guys want Deanna's phone number? Liz Bird wants to know, with Form 6 being blocked now, does that mean Don the Con won't get fined? Well, that's a good question. If he screwed up, intentionally on his form six or unintentionally remember he can be held liable for both whether it was intentional or unintentional and up to twenty thousand dollar fine um with everything blocked now well if we go back a month it was illegal then right all the judge has done has blocked it it's not gone for good and it doesn't mean it's going to be going forward for good. So we have to ask the question, <sighs> if it was illegal a month ago, is it still illegal today? Well, unfortunately, I'm not a lawyer, even though I try and talk like one at times. Pamela Montori says, the residents of Otter Creek should be forced to show proof of insurance before anyone is allowed to park on their properties. Yeah. Absolutely. That's a tremendous amount of liability letting people come on your property. And here's the thing. You have to remember, okay, this is Otter Creek's first rodeo. They're trying to do something positive. Now, where my almost entire vocational career was running events, and so an event like this is something that I could just plan in the back of my head versus some of the huge events I've done in the past from having Chinooks land on the property to having... That stuff doesn't matter. But you have to realize that they may not even have the liability to do this. Did they check in with their insurance company? So the way to get insurance on this is typically not to call your insurance company because what they can do is then exclude it. So, for example, when I had half mill time to grill, most people don't realize this. I had an umbrella package of insurance, $4 million if anything happened. That would cover me, okay? Now, what's going to cover Otter Creek? I'm going to guess right now, nothing. Now, I've worked with a lot of insurance companies in the past. I had everything from a herd of 45 horses to zip lines, giant swings, climbing walls, a paintball program. I had a pond, a blob, an iceberg, water slides, everything I had in my arsenal with event planning and the activities that they could participate in and many, many, many other things such as pew, pew. Yeah, had one of those programs too. And so uh, insurance is kind of in the aspect of sometimes it's don't ask, don't tell. So 
if I wanted to run a new program, for example, I started aviation camp. I want people and campers to be able to fly airplanes. I call them up and I go, am I covered with airplanes? And they go, you're not now. We're writing an exclusion. And so I'd call up with another idea. Can I do this? And they're like, you're not now. But if I would have never called them, I would have been covered. The underwriters wrote exclusions for some of the things that I actually wanted to do as activities. I, by the way, I did have aviation camp and campers came. They learned to fly the whole deal. They didn't get their license, but they got to fly. And so what I had to do is find an outside partner to bring that aviation insurance in. And Otter Creek may have to do something along those lines as well. They're just communicating the possibilities right now of what they can do. Now, this is pretty quick if they're going to do this in October or November for a tiny town to do this for the first time and figure out all the logistics, which are second nature to an individual such as myself who lived the event life, taking care of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, and I mean, honestly, hundreds of thousands of people every year when you add it all up versus a town not knowing who's going to show up, what the needs are, what do they have to do. And so... Insurance for the town, number one, I think they need to make sure they're covered. Now, every homeowner, hmm, we're going to struggle there because I think there are going to be individuals that have no insurance whatsoever, but are going to try and profit off having people park on their property. And I know some of you are already thinking, Jeremy will let everybody park on his property. No. Jeremy won't. My safety is currently compromised because of a temporary injunction, which is no end in sight, where I can't have pew pew around. And there are too many crazy individuals. I mean, read or watch anything online. Greta Fountainberry wants to know, why should Otter Creek have a social media website when there are so many already out there? And yes, there are. Greta goes on to say, some good, some bad. All right, let's be honest. Most of them are bad, okay? Because they take the aspect of the portion of bad from Otter Creek and up the ante, put it under a microscope times 10, okay? You've seen the bad of Otter Creek. You've seen Russ the Sus, Don the Con, Mary Mary. You've seen it. You haven't seen all the good. Well, you've seen part of it. Look at Christmas in the Creek. That was extremely good. Do you realize that over 25% of Otter Creek residents were actually volunteering at Christmas in the Creek? One fourth of the town was volunteering at Christmas in the Creek. That's an incredible thing to bring people together. Social media can be used for good. I know there are stalkers in Otter Creek who have used it for harm and for bad. I get it. I know there are other sites that people had good intentions, but then bad people come in and try and invade with ignorance, foolishness. So does Otter Creek need social media, a website? You answer that for yourself. What I do know is we're in the digital age, and if you're not in it, you're behind. And it could help for good things if it's filtered and kept good. Of course, now I'm going to say it's filtered, and then people are going to cry. Jeremy doesn't believe in freedom of speech. Absolutely, I believe in freedom of speech. Don't ever forget, your freedom of speech ends with my freedom to not listen. Now, you can go to any other ear and say whatever you want as long as it's covered under protected speech. You can go and make your own YouTube channel and tell everybody how much you hate somebody as long as it's protected under freedom of speech. But don't forget, every individual has the right to not listen. That's our right as well. You don't have to listen to me right now. Anybody can just go, you know what? I don't want to watch that. Or... Man, I can't wait to watch that. Oh, I don't like what was said. I'm going to turn the channel. I'm going to watch something else. Or, oh man, that was amazing. You see, mature individuals actually watch content, see things online, and they handle it with maturity. So I think the greatest need is probably social media for Otter Creek that is very, very professional 
thus very, very mature. The Stoops Troop says, interesting how Don the Con last month was telling the attorney, Megan, that she was wrong, she was illegal, but this month he's telling Zim and the board they should listen to her. So which is it? Is she illegal and wrong, or should the council actually listen to her? I think the most ironic part of all of this, it was Don the Con and Russ the Sus that fought wanting Megan. She was the more expensive lawyer. That's what they wanted. And now they both, they, they can't take it. They regret it. How interesting that Madam Mayor, Vice Mayor Zim, I believe, both wanted a cheaper lawyer. Uh, lawyers come in all variation of price tags, and usually based on experience and expertise and things along those lines. And <laughs> it's just hilarious that Don the Con and Russ the Sus wanted her and not the other, whether it was out of spite just to argue with Madam Mayor Therese, but they got Megan, and lo and behold, now they want nothing to do with Megan. Russ the Sus didn't even show up at town hall. How does this man who claims he's all for the town, he's going to take the town back, he does such good for the people, and yet the past two meetings he hasn't even been there. Now, the next meeting, I will be there. I couldn't be there this past time with my schedule. But I already have a plan. George and I have already put it together. Russ the Sus shows up. One camera will be on Russ the Sus and him picking his nose the entire time. And another camera will be on the actual council. Will Russ the Sus ever show up again? Will Albert Fuller? Where'd he go? Ah, so Russ is gone. Albert's gone. Don walks out last time. I mean, it just seems like it's all crumbling apart right before them. Some people say this is karma. I don't believe in karma. You already know that. I believe in God, and I believe God is in control, and I believe there's blessings when we do the right thing, and I believe there's curses or consequences when we do the wrong thing. And Russ the Sus, Don the Con, mm, those two have done way too much wrong.